Hey guys, welcome to today's video. It's of course raining again, super annoying, but if there's one thing that is even more annoying than rain, it's a slow computer, slow CPU. I actually wanted to share with you today a tutorial, how I started a new track, how I work on the drums and everything. But as you might know, my computer is getting slower and slower. It's so much nicer in the car. It's already raining this entire morning. But yeah, instead of doing the tutorial, I thought about just showing you how to actually make your computer faster, how to get more out of your door, how to speed up your process, use a couple of small sneaky techniques. So basically this video will be all about how to get the most out of your door, your computer, without having to buy a new one. The rain got even worse. Ah, disgusting. Oh, finally at my favorite place in the world, my studio. I still have to clean up a little. And I got a letter by my, yeah, royalty collecting company, the Gema, for all of my music. Let's see how much money it is this time. It's definitely a new record, 0 0.09 euros. Thank you, Gema. Thank you. That's how you make a living as a music producer. Yeah, but you know, always when I get bad news, I just try to work even harder. So let's get straight into like making music and also talking about how to actually make music with a slow computer and get the most out of it. I opened Logic and this right here is my Wii Run-In track. I'm almost done with it. I'm like just taking care of the fine EQing and the last mixing things. And here on this project, I did something that I also had to do on the past project. I have a whole lot of chord steps layered from the Serum synth. And they were so CPU heavy that I actually opened up another project where I had this project without the main sound. And then I sound designed the main synth sound, exported it again into this project. But there's actually something that does something very similar within your project, so you don't have to switch between projects. And that's the freeze function that Logic has. And I think every other door also has something similar. You just hit the freeze button. It will render this one track and, and replace like the MIDI or the synth or the effects on it with an audio file, which is way less CPU heavy. And whenever you need to change something, you unfreeze it, change it, and then you can freeze it again. This saves a ton of CPU, especially if you do it on those tracks that have plugins, third-party plugins that are CPU intensive. One of my main issues, especially now in the past summer time, was like the overheating of the computer. The second it gets warm, it loses a lot of CPU power because the computer is like slowing itself down to not overheat. So I actually always have a cooling pad available that I can put underneath of the computer. This helps out a ton. The fan noise is gone entirely and I can work like at least 20 or 30 percent faster with my computer. I had one of those fan spinning things that you put underneath of your laptop, but it didn't actually really help and the fan noise was then twice as loud. I had the internal fans and the external fans. So this is actually working out great for me, but be careful with it. And then there are some of the obvious things, for example, deleting plugins that you don't need, um, deleting tracks that you don't need. I usually always have like, even at the end of my project, like 10 tracks that are muted that I don't need where I thought I had a great idea and I'm not ending up using them. So just delete them, this will free up a lot of CPU. Another really important thing is actually to use sends. As you can see here, for example, bus number six is my reverb send, bus number seven is my vocal reverb send, bus number 17 is my chorus, number 14 is another reverb. So I'm reusing those instead of having uh, the same reverb on all of these buses, I just send them to bus number seven. And I just have to use the reverb plugin once. This saves a ton of CPU instead of having for every single track a reverb, I group them. This also makes the things sound more glued together, especially for the drums, for example. I have one smaller ambient kind of reverb that I put on all of the hi-hats and, and all of the smaller drum elements, maybe except for the kick um, that doesn't get any reverb. And clap and snare, they need just like a special, a little bit longer reverb, but also those two I can group up 
give them the same reverb and make them sound more like they're, they're coming from the same place. My biggest CPU overload troublemaker is definitely Diva. It's my favorite synth. It has like a nice sound and so many different sounds built into one. But it's it's CPU heavy. It, it has the name for a reason. But luckily they integrated uh, accuracy into it. So you can set it to a draft. That's the lowest setting. You can also set it to divine. But I can guarantee you your computer will freeze immediately. And then you switch the offline accuracy to, to best. This way whenever you bounce the track it will immediately take the better sounding processor heavy sound and, and algorithms instead of the one that you're actually listening while making the track. There's also a little button that says multi-core. I think it's used whenever you have like multiple cores available, but I, I kind of have the feeling, I'm not sure about it, if you use one instance of Diva in your project and you apply the multi-core, it will reduce the CPU. But if you have multiple Divas, that will actually make it worse. So try it out for yourself. I'm actually not really sure about how to use this multi-core, but that's my experience. I got actually a lot more tips how to reduce the latency whenever you work on a DAW, but first up, I want to work on this track, finish it, be able to send it to Universal. As you know, I just recently signed with them a contract and I don't like sending them half finished tracks. So today is actually my deadline that, that I set up for myself to send it to them so that I know before the weekend what we will actually do with this track. If it might be released on another label or my own label, I'm, I'm still not sure about it. It really depends on, on the options they have for me. Ooh, finally, another track finished. This one will be out in a month or in a month and a half. It's the We Runnin' track featuring Gavin that I recorded with him like three or four months ago where he was visiting here in the studio and we had this amazing session. Let it, let it, let it go, feel the high, feel it all, we run it. And I really can't wait to share this track with you, but let's get back to the topic with the CPU lowering kind of methods. So actually the thing that will help you definitely the most is lowering the sample rate of your DAW. You just go into the settings, into audio here in Logic. Just click here and change it to whatever your computer is capable of. And depending on the stage of your track, it will give you here in milliseconds the round trip, the time the audio needs to go once through to your computer and also the latency. And the latency is definitely the biggest downside of using this method. You will introduce a whole lot of latency. I usually try to keep it low so I have almost no latency or use the low latency models that is built into Logic while recording the singer and songwriter while recording the guitars or the chords. With the chords it's not that much of a problem because you can still quantize them afterwards. But then the more I advance in the production and I use more plugins and more like effects and special cues, shaping and coloring the sounds, I just change it so that I have more latency but my computer is actually running and playing back the music smoothly without any glitches and noises and clicks and pops and all this kind of annoying stuff. I just hate, I just absolutely hate when my computer freezes. I hate it so much. And on some days you just hit play, it freezes, you hit play, it freezes. And it's so annoying if you have something that just, just stops your creativity, like all of a sudden. I wish they would invent a computer that is so freaking fast that this is not going to happen. But then again, the plugin developers just make their plugins way more CPU heavy. So it's a constant battle, no matter how fast your computer is, eventually it will be too slow for the new stuff. Speaking of new stuff, with updates, be careful. In most cases, the updates usually will reduce the CPU because the developers make their plugins more efficient. For example, I had um, the Neutron by Isotope just in the first couple of weeks where it was released and it was super CPU intensive. I couldn't use more than four or five of them. And now they actually updated it. You can use up to 10 or 12, at least with my computer and setup. What else do we have? Um, yeah, more obvious kind of stuff like closing other programs that are running in the background. Some of the plugins um, have like analyzer functions and if you turn them off, even if they are not opened, it might reduce the CPU usage. It really depends how the developers actually program their, their plugins. 
I think in logic it's it's made so whenever you don't see the analyzer, it's not draining your CPU, but I'm not sure about it for third-party plugins. I think we're now getting to the very last tip that I have for you, and it's my favorite by far because it's actually helping a ton. It's using multi-channel output um, plugins. For example, I have my drum sequencer. It's called Geist, and it has engines, and those engines have like samples in them. And instead of using like in every track one instance of that that plugin, I can just use one and route it to different channels. This way, I'm saving a lot of CPU. This way, my workflow is just way faster because it's just one plugin that I open for all of the drum elements. Instead of, for example, if I want to pitch the, the clap, I have to go to the track and click onto the, the plugin and then pitch it. It's like all in one. Let me actually show you really quick how this is set up. So right here at the top, I have all of my drums in, in one stacked folder that I can open and close. And as you can see, it says all drums, then kick, top kick, clap, snare, hi-hat and hat. When I click here on kick and double click on guys, that will open up the program and in the, I think in the layer mixer, no. It's the engine, no, the global, no, sampler, no, where is it, pad mixer? Yeah, it's here in the pad mixer. So in the pattern mode, you have like all of those tracks with the different elements. Here at the bottom, you have the, the kick, the top kick, the clap or snare, and the hi-hats, and they get rooted to the pad mixer. And here at the bottom, you can tell it where to go. So S1, is actually the second channel. The first channel is always like the master. And then you just go through, I have set it up here until number 12. What's very important is whenever you use that plugin, you have to choose it as a multi output device. You can't use mono or stereo, it has to be in multi output. And then you will actually also get the minus and plus sign here right on the channel. Whenever you hit plus, you're creating another channel that is a multi output and you can root again whatever you want to it. Well, this might seem a little bit more complicated, but it saves a ton of CPU. It's quite handy and easy to set up and I have it like built into my auto load. So whenever I open up Logic, this is already set up. I don't have to worry about it. So I would just advise you to have this as part of your auto load. Same for your channel buses for the reverbs, effects and everything. This way, if it's already set up, it's more likely that you will use it in a way. So having a template as a starting point will speed up your working process and also make sure that you don't drain your CPU that much. I think that's already it for today. Don't forget to like, subscribe, coming up a uh, tutorial because I'm starting a new track. So I have the CPU available to actually record the screen and the internal audio. Also coming up this week, definitely testing the Arturia Key Lab that I just got like two days ago and I still didn't unbox it, which is quite hard for me. I just, just love opening packages, as you know. Also, enable notification to not miss those things. And I actually now have to hurry up back home because there's like a, a special event tonight. For this event, I really need to hurry up. It's actually starting in just like five minutes. And walking back home from here is at least like 15 to 20 minutes. But as you know, there is luckily a fun way to be faster and also stop draining. So let's go for it. Time for the special event. Um, actually, there are two special events. So first up, actually, before I forget it, we did a giveaway for a plugin like the Sufi Magic EQing Resonating Getting Away plugin. It's a really bad description for it, but as you know, I already made a video about it and I did like two giveaways for it. And the second one goes out to Josh Blake. I will write you an email and you will then get the free copy. There will be another giveaway in a couple of weeks. And yeah, the other special event is actually the, the keynote by Apple. I watch it almost every year. I actually watch it every year, every time they have one. I just love it. I loved it more with Steve Jobs. It was always amazing, new tech, new stuff. I'm not expecting that much new stuff from Apple, new iPhone the HomePod thing. Probably the most interesting is the, the update to the High Sierra thing, at least for me, working with it. Um, the new file system might speed up the computer. I'm hoping it does. I will actually let you know if it's faster using it with Logic and if it's wise to upgrade 
Usually it isn't. You should at least wait like one or two months, but I'm very impatient. I always upgrade immediately. In most cases it works, in some cases it didn't work, but luckily I always have backups, so no problem. I'm just hoping for, for again, a one more thing, but it's not really likely going to happen. See you.